This is the fifth video supplement for CIS 251, Grand Valley State University's course on computer organization and assembly language. In the previous video, I discussed the binary number system and its use in building combinatorial circuits. In this video, I discuss hex decimal and other number bases. In addition to the how, like how do I convert from base 7 to decimal, or how do I convert from decimal to hex decimal, the majority of this video will discuss the why. For example, why do these conversion algorithms work? or why do we care about hexadecimal? If you're looking to simply review the mechanics of base conversion, you can either use the links on the screen or watch the abridged version of the video. As always, I caution you against memorizing a process you don't really understand. I have test questions designed especially for students who take such shortcuts. In the previous video, we saw that because we have 10 fingers, our normal way of writing numbers is based on each digit representing a power of 10. For example, 1101 means 1000 plus 100 plus no tens plus a single one. We then saw how we can replace the base of 10 with a base of 2. Thus, 1101 means 18 plus 14 plus no twos plus a 1. Or, in more familiar terms, 13 in base 10. Base 2 is useful because it allows us to represent integers as a sequence of 1s and zeros. The first video explained how this sequence of 1s and zeros serves as a convenient mechanism for communicating with combinatorial circuits. It turns out that you can use any integer other than 0 or 1 as a base. For example, we can represent numbers in base 7. 2634 base 7 means 4 times 7 to the 0 power plus 3 times 7 to the first power plus 6 times 7 squared plus 2 times 7 cubed. Or when we expand out the powers of 7, we see that it is 4 times 1 plus 3 times 7 plus 6 times 49 plus 2 times 343, which when we multiply this out and add it up, see that 2634 base 7 is the same as 1005 base 10. Okay, let's do another example. How about 1215 base 6? Again, this would be 5 times 6 to the 0 power plus 1 times 6 to the first power plus 2 times 6 squared plus 1 times 6 cubed. Expand the powers of 6 and we get 5 times 1 plus 1 times 6 plus 2 times 36 plus 1 times 216, which we can multiply out, add up, and get 299. Okay, this is cute, but what use do we have for unusual number bases like this? Well, here's an example. You can think of a license plate as a base 36 number. Base 10 has 10 unique symbols, 0 through 9. For bases higher than 10, we need more symbols. We can use any symbols we like, but letters are the standard choice. For example, we let A represent a group of 10, and B represent a group of 11, and so on. Thus, 4BX G21 base 36 means 1 times 36 to the 0 power plus 2 times 36 to the first power plus 16 times 36 squared. Notice we're using G to represent a group of 16 plus 33 times 36 cubed plus 11 times 36 to the fourth power plus 4 times 36 to the fifth power. I've already expanded the powers of 36, and when we add this up, we see that 4BXG21 base 36 is 261,900,937. Occasions to use such unusual number bases are rare, but they do occur and are worth knowing about. Now it's time to work the other way and convert from base 10 into other bases. Let's start with a quick review of how we convert base 10 into binary. In particular, I'm going to use the second technique that I presented in the previous video, the one that converts numbers in one pass. This technique leverages three facts. All odd integers can be written as 2 times k plus 1. All even integers can be written as 2 times k plus 0. And multiplying a binary number by 2 adds a 0 to the end, in the same way that multiplying a decimal number by 10 adds a 0 to the end. We use these three facts to get this algorithm. Take a decimal number and write down a 1 if it's odd or a 0 if it's even. And then, to the left of that, write down the binary for the k. Let's see how we applied this to 27. 27 is equal to 2 times 13 plus 1. So we write down the 1 and then convert 13 to binary. 13 is 2 times 6 plus 1, so we write down the 1 and convert 6 to binary. 6 is 2 times 3 plus 0, so we write down the 0, convert 3 to binary. 3 is 2 times 1 plus 1, so we write down the 1, 
and then also add the remaining 1 to the beginning of the number, leaving 1101 in binary, which is, if you work it back out, 27 in base 10. This technique for converting decimal to binary generalizes to other number bases. Let's begin with the observations for base 2. We can combine these two observations into a single statement. An integer x can be written as 2 times k plus x mod 2 for some integer k. By that I mean if you tell me the x, I can find the k. Specifically, the k is what you get when you divide x by 2 using integer division. Integer division is what Java, C, and most other programming languages do when you divide one integer by another. The result you get is simply the integer, no fraction, no remainder, or anything. The second term here is x mod 2. The mod, or modulo operator, returns the remainder of the corresponding integer division. For example, suppose you wanted to share some M&Ms equally with a friend. The k tells you how many M&Ms you each get. The x mod 2 tells you how many M&Ms are left over. Notice that in the case of two friends, the remainder has to either be 0 or 1. If there were two or more M&Ms, then you could each have one more. Now, as an example, consider we have 13 M&Ms, right? 13 is equal to 2 times 6 plus 1, which means you each would get 6 M&Ms and there'd be one left over. Let's see how we can generalize this combined formula for other number bases. First, we'll take the formula for base 2 and then replace the 2 with a b to represent any arbitrary base. This general formula tells us the same M&M story. If we divide x M&Ms among b people, k tells us how many M&Ms each person gets. x mod b tells us how many M&Ms are left over. Notice that x mod b must be in the range 0 to b minus 1. We can't have b or more M&Ms left over, because if there were, there'd be enough M&Ms for each person to have at least one more. So suppose you have 19 M&Ms and want to share them among six people. Using integer division, 19 divided by 6 is equal to 3, meaning each person gets 3 M&Ms. 19 mod 6 is equal to 1, meaning there's one M&M left over. So now let's plug this back into the formula to make sure everything works out. And you can see here that it does. So let's see a couple of examples of how we can leverage this formula to convert base 10 into any number base. First, we'll write 334 in base 5. 334 is equal to 5 times 66 plus 4. So we write down the 4 and write 66 in base 5. 66 is 5 times 13 plus 1, so we write down the 1 and write 13 in base 5. 13 is 5 times 2 plus 3, so we write down the 3 and then also add the remaining 2 to the beginning of the number, which tells us that 334 is written as 2314 in base 5. I encourage you to pause the video and work this backwards to see that 2314 base 5 when expanded does work out to 334. Let's do one more example. This time let's write 334 in base 6. 334 is 6 times 55 plus 4, so we write down the 4 and then write 55 in base 6. 55 is equal to 6 times 9 plus 1, so we write down the 1 and then write 9 in base 6. 9 is equal to 6 times 1 plus 3, so we write down the 3 and then also add the remaining 1 to the beginning of the number, which shows us that 334 is 1314 base 6. Earlier I mentioned that the use of unusual number bases was relatively rare. However, there is one other number base that computer scientists use quite often. Base 16, also known as hexadecimal. As I explained with the license plate example, since 16 is greater than 10, we need more than 10 symbols to write a base 16 number. So as before, we'll use letters, specifically A through F. So let's look at AC3F base 16. As the table shows, A represents a group of 10, C represents a group of 12, and F represents a group of 15. Thus, AC3F in hexadecimal means 15 times 16 to the 0 power, plus 3 times 16 to the first power, plus 12 times 16 squared, plus 10 times 16 cubed. So we'll expand the powers of 16, multiply this out, add up the terms, and see that AC3F in hexadecimal is 44,095 in base 10. Now you may be wondering what's so special about base 16. Why do computer scientists like it so much? Well, watch this. 
Let's take a hexadecimal number, say 4A3D. But instead of using letters and numbers for each place value, let's choose a different set of 16 symbols. For this example, consider each group of four ones and zeros as a single symbol. When we use the alternate symbols, we get this, which looks an awful lot like a binary number. So let's see if these two representations have the same base 10 value. When we expand 4A3D as a hexadecimal number, we see that it's equal to 19,005 base 10. When we treat the alternate version as a binary number, we also see that it's equal to 19,005. Is this a coincidence? No, of course not. To see why, we'll first focus on the leftmost symbol, the numbers in orange. When we look at the binary expansion for these four bits, we see that we can factor out 2 to the 12. If your algebra 2 is a bit rusty, remember that to divide powers of a given number, you simply subtract the exponents. In the case of 2 to the 15 divided by 2 to the 12, notice that the 12 2's in the denominator cancel 12 of the 15 2's in the numerator, leaving 3 2's or 2 cubed. Back to the orange symbols here. Notice that the terms left after factoring out 2 to the 12, the terms inside the parentheses, happen to be the binary expansion of the decimal number 4. Hence our choice of 0, 1, 0, 0 as the alternate symbol for 4. Now, what about the 2 to the 12 that we just factored out? Well, 2 to the 12 is 2 multiplied by itself 12 times. Let's associate those 12 2's in groups of 4, or, in other words, 3 16's, which we write as 16 cubed. This 16 cubed is, not coincidentally, the place value for the corresponding hexadecimal digit. So now let's apply this same procedure to all four groups. First, we'll factor out the largest power of 2. Notice this time I've factored it out to the right. Then, we'll rewrite the binary expansions in the parentheses as base 10 numbers. Finally, we'll rewrite the powers of 2 as powers of 16. And what we end up with is the hexadecimal expansion of the number we started with. This holds for any hexadecimal number. As a result, converting between hex and binary is trivial. Given a hex number, just convert the digits one at a time to the corresponding 4-bit binary number, as we just did here. And, in the other direction, you can convert a binary number to hexadecimal by breaking it into groups of 4 bits and converting each group into the corresponding hex digit. Let's look at an example. So here we have a long binary number, and so we'll first break it into groups of 4, and then convert each group one at a time to this corresponding hex digit. The next question is, of course, so what? Is this anything more than a cute math trick? Well, yes it is. Writing values in hex is very useful, especially when working with hardware, because it allows you to see at a glance what values are on each input wire. Consider a combinatorial circuit with eight inputs. And suppose I want an input of 97 in base 10. It's not immediately clear what values go on each of the wires. However, if I were to instead specify the input value in base 16, then it would be clear at a glance which values go on which of the wires. This is my brief explanation of number bases. Whether or not you're completely comfortable with the topic yet, I strongly encourage you to take a minute and listen to the song New Math by Tom Lehrer for a different and slightly more entertaining perspective on the subject. Thanks for watching.